The other thing that I've come across uh, very few is that some brothers and sisters will revert or convert to Islam and in the beginning, maybe in the first six months, they might be quite um, into it and then slowly, slowly that kind of um, interest dies away because they haven't got the right teachers or the right um, contacts mm -hmm. and stuff. They kind of like start detaching Losing themselves. It, yeah. what, what kind of advice could you give to those brothers and sisters? Well, an Iman yanqus wa yazid. Yanqus bil ma'asi wa yazid bil ta'ad. This is what the scholars say. Iman, it decreases with disobedience and it increases with obedience. Mm -hmm. The more you obey Allah, the stronger your faith will be. Mm -hmm. The more you disobey Allah, the weaker your faith will be. So every time you disobey Allah, you feel your distance from Him and from His religion and boundaries. And that will cause you even to do more haram and more sins and to loosen your relationship with your Creator. But the more you obey Allah, every time you do a good deed, you feel, you feel very close to Allah. Your faith is alive. So it all goes back how practicing you are and how not practicing. So, and it all goes back to your companionship, okay? Uh, it all goes back to getting rid of bad habits, mm -hmm. quitting bad habits, smoking, clubbing, music. These small things that people don't really see them, consider them as major. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who damage your faith greatly. Sure. So gradually get rid of these haram habits, okay? And try to fill your time with something that is beneficial, whether reading or attending lectures or listening to conferences online, reading books, uh, going out with righteous companionship. This will strengthen your Iman. So it all goes back to your faith. You will never leave Islam if your faith was in good, in mm. good, in good condition. Sure. You will only leave Islam or stop practicing Islam if you were yourself sinning or craving for desires which are not lawful in Islam, such as homosexuality, such as drug addictions, mm -hmm. such as clubbing, gambling. These are haram desires, unlawful desires. If a person indulges himself or herself in them, it's very hard for them to come out. And then what do they do? The first thing they would blame, Islam is making it hard for me. Islam is so strict, it's forbidding me from uh, having partying, from drinking, from sleeping with, sleeping around, from doing this. And then you're blaming the religion foolishly. Mm -hmm. Whereas the religion was disciplining you and making you a responsible, dutiful person in your aspect of life and in your religious affairs. Whereas you're, you were overpowered by your haram desires. Mm -hmm. and then your connection with Allah will loosen and then you will say, I need a break. I will come back to Allah. Mm -hmm. While you're thinking to come back to Allah, Allah may take you like that and you die in that state. Yes. What would you say to Allah? So there's no break from Allah. There's no break from your religion. Once you embrace Islam, you serve your Lord until death comes to you. Yes, there's ups and downs. That's okay. As long as major sins are avoided, that's okay with ups and downs. Iman comes up and down to all of us. Mm -hmm. Okay? But what matters, you strive hard to fulfill your obligations and stay away from, from the major uh, prohibitions, inshallah ta'ala. So that's, that's your main concern. Yeah.